to read chapter 10 of Wish by Barbara O'Connor. She's one of my all-time favorite authors, as you've heard me say, what, 10 times now? Anyway, I'm going to get started right away today. I miss you guys like crazy. Let's go ahead and see what we can get accomplished. <clears throat> when I got home, I told Gus and Bertha about Howard's plan to catch Wishbone. We're going to build a great big trap, I said, stretching my arms out wide to show how big, with chicken wire from his daddy's workshop. Gus's eyebrows shot up. Uh, a trap? Yeah, well, kind of. More like one of those big dog crates. We're going to put it at the edge of the woods besides the garden shed, and then we're going to stick branches and leaves and stuff in the chicken wire so it blends in. I went on to explain how we were going to put something good to eat inside the crate, and when Wishbone went in to eat it, we were just going to close the door. He likes meatloaf, Bertha said, and hot dogs and bologna. She tossed a couple of pieces of fish stick left over from her supper onto the floor for two of the cats. Now, I don't want to rain on your parade, Charlie, but uh, what if that dog isn't so friendly to people? What if he bites? What if he has some kind of disease? <clears throat> Gus, Bertha said, tell Charlie about that dog you had when you were a kid. And she went and told an old old story about Gus's dog named Skeeter who used to catch rabbits and bring them home for Gus and his sisters to play with and one time he climbed in the back of the produce truck and ended up all the way down in Hendersonville and showed up on the front porch the next day full of porcupine quills right Gus Gus nodded right and then one time he dug up a hornet's nest Bertha said <clears throat> that dog must have had nine lives just like a cat must have Gus said Tell her about how he waited for you outside school every day. Bertha scooped up one of the cats onto her lap. Oh, 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 and tell her about how we used to steal chicken livers right out of the frying pan. We're going to bore this poor child to death, Bertie, he said, winking at me. Right, Butterbean? Gus had started calling me Butterbean sometimes. That made me feel like a baby, but I didn't say anything. Then Bertha told us about how some woman in the grocery store who had fainted in the cereal aisle, but I wasn't really listening because I was thinking about Wishbone. I pictured him waiting at school for me every day, then he'd run along beside the school bus like he'd done that day I saw him fighting. Maybe the bus driver would let him on the bus because he was so smart and would do tricks for all of the kids. He'd sleep in my bed every night and I'd sing good old Noah to him. He'd let me put Jackie's Raleigh High School t-shirt on him and maybe even paint his toenails red. I'd teach him to go to the end of the driveway on Sunday mornings and get the newspaper before church. He'd chase rabbits out of the garden and sit on the porch with us every single night. I still had a little niggle about Mama having a hissy fit when I brought him to Raleigh with me, but I pushed that aside. By the time Bertha went inside to get a box of graham crackers for us, I was so in love with Wishbone that I couldn't hardly stand it. I sure hoped Howard's plan would work. Well, let's you and I go set up the sprinkler in the garden, Gus said to me, tugging on his dirty baseball cap. I followed him outside with three cats sauntering along beside us. I helped him untangle the hose and drag it out to the garden. While he attached the sprinkler to it, I walked up and down the tidy rows of pole beans and squash and tomato plants growing bigger and bigger every day. The soft dirt was warm under my bare feet. Suddenly, a ladybug landed on my arm. I put my finger next to it and let it climb on. Then I held my finger up and whispered, ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. As I watched that little ladybug fly off into the sky, I made my wish. Jackie called me again that night. She told me she had put those blue streaks in her hair and now everybody at school was copying her. I swear, Charlie, she said, everybody in Raleigh's got blue streaks in their hair. Then she told me she met some boy who played guitar in a band and had his nose pierced. His name was Cockroach and her sort of kind of boyfriend Arlo didn't really like him. Cockroach, I said, because what else can you say to that? But she just kept talking. She couldn't wait to graduate and kiss that school goodbye. She and some girl named Shayla might move to Fort Lauderdale if Shayla's uncle could get them jobs in his Mexican restaurant. But if that didn't happen, she might go to school to be a dental assistant. She sure had a lot of plans, but it seemed like none of those plans included me. Are you going to come visit me sometime? I asked in a tiny voice that sounded like a baby. Of course I am, Charlie, she said, as soon as I get time. 
I guess she had lots of time for Cockroach and lots of time for Arlo and lots of time for Shayla, but not a lot of time for me. Out on the porch that night, Bertha told Gus about her day while I sit thought zipping through the trees to wherever Wishbone was. I wanted him to know he didn't have to be a stray like me. I wanted him to be mine. Then my mind wandered to the Odoms. I wondered what they were doing right that very minute. I bet they were all piled on pillows on the floor, eating popcorn and playing crazy eights. I bet Miss Odom was taping their school papers up on the wall and telling them how proud she was of them. Then she'd have to say rutabaga so Cotton would stop drawing on the wall with markers. Gus interrupted my thoughts when he stood up and stretched. Time to turn in. I hated the thought of another day at school. That awful bus with gum on the seats and kids snickering when I walked by. Miss Willoughby frowning at me and tossing my marked up papers onto my desk with a sigh. The cafeteria with kids flinging peas at each other and ignoring me. There were only a few more weeks of school, but it felt like a hundred years to me. There was no doubt about it. I needed Wishbone more than ever. All right, friends, that wraps up chapter 10 of A Wish by Barbara O'Connor. My question is, do you think it's fair that Jackie is living her life without Charlie? How do you think you would feel if you were Charlie in this situation? All right, friends, stay kind, stay patient, practice social distancing, because I want to see you sooner rather than later. All right, bye, guys. I'll see you next time.